Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint a lovely bouquet of peony flowers. And the colors I'm using today are from Lucas and they're available at jerrysartorama.com. They're our sponsor today and I will put a coupon code in the video description uh, in case you're gonna do some shopping so you can save a little money. Now I'm painting upstairs in my office. I have kids and pets, so I'm using water mixable oils because I can use the regular old water bucket I always use. And uh, it just makes cleanup a lot easier. I don't have to deal with solvents and um, and I don't really notice a sacrifice in quality using the water mixable oils. The colors we're gonna use today are Lizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and Primary Yellow. And those are our three primaries from which we can mix a lot of colors. And then we're also gonna use some Phthalo Green, uh, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, and titanium white. So these are all single pigment colors. I do believe, I'll double check on that yellow, but I do believe these are all single pigment colors. Though this has two yellow pigments in it, but they're all really nice and bright and pure. And they're going to allow us to, um, uh, to keep really nice bright mixes. And I always just keep the paints that I'm using off to the side so that I can um, quickly refill them if I run out of my palette. I'm just using a white palette. I get these at the dollar store and they're wonderful for this and I can clean them up. And I like that it's nice and bright and I can see exactly what I'm mixing. You can also use a gray palette if you prefer or disposable palette paper. For brushes, I am using the Creative Mark Mimic Hog brushes. So these are the only um, faux hog brushes that I have found that really work well. Um, they are completely synthetic, so no animals went into the making of these brushes, and they're very durable, because sometimes with synthetic brushes, uh, oil paints do tend to kind of chew them up a bit, so I found these to be nice and durable using both my regular traditional oil paints and the synthetic, uh, the uh, water mixable oils. And you can use the same oil painting brushes for either type of oil paints. I don't use these for my acrylics or watercolors, but, they're, but keeping them with any of the types of oil paints is going to be just fine. Now something else I like to do sometimes is sketch on with a um, uh, with an oil pastel. You totally can do that, but I think I'm just going to use a brush for my sketching. I also have this uh, Pro Stroke from Jerry's Artorama. This is also from Creative Mark, uh, but it is a regular hog brush. I'm just a little more familiar with this, so I'm going to use it for the sketching. So I'm going to start off by mixing a little bit of burnt umber, and I do have a little bit of water on my brush, because uh, for this first layer, this first sketch, I do want to have it fairly thin. I don't want the paint too strong, so I'm just adding a little bit of water. So I have kind of like a... Um, uh, kind of milky consistency. I'm going to start by sketching on my vase. So I'm just doing kind of a circle here. And then I'm just going to kind of figure out about where I'm going to want my flowers. This big flower is as big as the vase. The peonies have really, really big blooms, lots of petals. And basically I just want to figure out where they are so I can avoid putting background there. Um, and that's basically it. Don't worry if you do get some color in the background because you can wipe it out with a rag if you need to. I just want to, I, I want to just kind of get an idea of where that's going to go. I'm just flattening out the bottom of the vase a little bit. And that's really all there is to it. So now we're gonna put in our background I don't like to spend too much time sketching on this layer layer because um, you're going to obliterate so much of it when you do your painting. So I'm going to start here just by, I like to dampen my brush a little bit just to kind of get, um, you know, get the bristles together and just help the paint flow. I'm just working on a 9 by 12 canvas panel. I've been using panels a lot more lately because they are a little easier to store. Now I want to make uh, a neutral background. So what I'm going to do is grab some ultramarine blue grab some burnt umber. Those two colors together are gonna to make a nice gray. And also gonna grab a little bit of yellow ochre. Now I, I put my pet, my paint out on my palette. Um, I like to get them on the edges. And then I put two dabs of white out because I know that I'm gonna to have to go back in and need fresh white rather than putting one big gob of white which could get contaminated. I usually put it in two or three little piles so that I can, um, uh, so that I can keep kind of some fresh color there at all times. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of white in this mix here, and kind of mix uh, the blue and the brown until I get a nice neutral gray color that I want. I'm going for kind of like a taupey gray. And what I'm gonna do is throw in kind of like a table line, I guess. This is uh, the backdrop. I'll link the reference photo in the video description. Um, what I'm doing here is, it's kind of like a, um, kind of like a photography background. It's just a very nice neutral modeled background and that's really what I want to 
what I want to get in here. Get a little shadow under the vase. There isn't a ton of um, direct light, but there is a little bit more shadow to the right hand side. So I'm getting that in. I think I want a little more blue in there. Cool down the shadow areas a bit. And I think I'll grab a little yellow ochre because that's a nice warming color. I'm going to go in with this yellow ochre up here. Notice I'm not adding a lot of white. Now I did prop my um, my painting board up. I have a little roll of masking tape kind of underneath the top of it. Now I'm doing that because it's going to help not have so much glare. When you're working with oils, um, you will notice some glare. I typically, if I'm just painting, um, you know, for fun on my own, I would, I would typically work on an easel. And that's why your oil painting brushes tend to be longer, longer handled, so you can kind of step back and get a good a good look, a good perspective um, of your painting. Uh, so, so that's a reason for that. And also, it, when you can step back from your paint and it's and it's upright, you're not going to get so much glare because your lighting is probably overhead. And I'm going to grab some white. And the strokes that I'm using here are just kind of like a scumbling. You're just kind of like crisscrossing and getting some nice texture in there. And go, you want to overlap the focal objects. I just kind of put them there because I didn't want to put a gobs and gobs of paint behind the flowers, but you do want to overlap them because um, oil paint, especially when we're using white in the mix, is quite opaque. So it can you can cover up those things. Now you can do your background in acrylics if you prefer. You could do all of this in acrylics and then paint over the flowers in oils uh, if you wanted to. And I've done that before, especially if I want to have a really nice textured background. That's a really nice effect. You, I, I really want the brush strokes to show. If you decide that it's too much texture as you go along, you can um, actually blend it out a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that with some of the other brushes that I have on my table. Now the thing that, the, the reason I will use a, uh, an actual hog brush, I mean these are synthetic, but up until I found these, I just wasn't happy with any of the synthetics that I had found for oils. The reason why I would use a, a actual hog brush is because they're so durable that I'm not gonna be throwing that brush away in a year. I'm gonna be keeping, I have the, the brushes that I have, I've had for decades, and um, and they're just so durable and they hold up to being cleaned with solvents because that's really where the, um, that's really the damaging part of the oil paints. That's what tends to, you know, hurt your brushes. Um, so because they last so much longer, I'm not putting so much in the landfill, it just feels like that's a little bit kinder to the environment and they are a byproduct of the um, of the meat industry and the rest of my family, well, aside from one of my children, um, are meat eaters. So, you know, I know that I'm contributing to that even though I don't eat meat myself. So I'd rather see the whole animal used. So that's my, um, that's my ra rationalization. You know, you, I just try to look at the big picture. It's like, what is, what is the best thing for the, for the, you know, what do I go by, by the intent, I guess, what is gonna, be the most kindest to the earth? What? How is my hobby uh, or my career going to create the least amount of impact? So I think throwing brushes, if I'm not throwing brushes away frequently, keeping it out of the landfill, then I, I feel like that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good thing. But you can, you we have so many more choices now. So I'm really thankful for that. It wasn't the case a few years ago. Uh, and that blue got a little dark. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit of brown to that. You can do this with regular oils as well. Um, but just in the points where I was dampening my brush with water, you would just dampen it with a little bit of um, solvent, paint thinner, Gamzol, whatever you prefer to use. When I clean my, my palette, I um, with the water mixable oils, I'll just spritz it with a little bit of water and wipe it with a paper towel. And that does a really good job. And then I would follow up with some dish soap to kind of cut the grease. So that's kind of how you can you can deal with that. Now, when I am doing this table line, I wanna make sure um, that I have it fairly straight. So I might tip it up a little bit more like that and get a, you know, kind of hold it out in front of me so I can see and just kind of drag a straight line across. This is gonna be blended out a little bit, so I'm really not too worried about it, but I don't want it to be like obviously lopsided. It's not a really crisp defined edge. Now, water mixable oils take as long as regular oils to dry. So if you're contemplating trying water mixable oils because you think it's going to dry faster, that's not really the case. Um, 
If you want a fast drying oil, I actually recommend the Lucas 1862 oils. They are also available at Jerry's Artorama. They're the, these are Lucas Berlin's. These are the, um, the water soluble, but the Lucas 1862 are the traditional ones and they dry to the touch overnight, which is really nice. Now, if you do add mediums to it, like in any, any sort of oils, then it will, um, it will make it dry slower. So you just have to keep that in mind. I typically paint Alla Prima without much for mediums or oils, maybe just a little bit of solvent at the beginning. Uh, but if you're working in layers and you do like to add those oils, that's gonna be a consideration. The, well, anytime you add an oil, it makes it dry slower. That's why you use the oil additives towards the end of your painting session so that you, um, uh, so that those top film layers dry um, dry slower so your painting doesn't crack. I hope I'm not overwhelming you with too much information, <laughs> but I figured it'd be more interesting than just, you know, watching paint dry. So if you like that texture, you can leave it just the way it is. If you want to soften a little bit, there's two different brushes you can use for that that work really well. And one is a fan brush. And this other one, another one is an, uh, an Egbert here, this really long filbert. They're really soft because they have longer bristles. And so if you just wanna dampen down the texture a little bit, this works really well. This will blend it really smooth. So I just maybe you'd wanna dampen out a little bit of the texture. So I'm just kind of tapping um, along here. The, the other good thing about water mixable oils is that um, like with regular oils, you can rinse them in solvent and keep on painting like as you're going, if you don't have too many brushes, but you can't totally wash them out with soap and water and use them right away. You need to let them dry. But if you are using the water soluble oils, you can because the water's not going to harm anything. So that is something where it has a little bit of an advantage. Softening there where the uh, bend in the photo backdrop would be. I feel like I want a little bit more light on the table. Um, I think I'll go in with a fresh brush for that just so I can keep it nice and bright. Try not to get the table lopsided when you're working, when you're sitting down at a table. I should probably stand up. Oh, okay, I like that. I feel like I get a little play of light in there now. Okay, I like that better. Maybe a little bit over there. And then I can just kind of soften a little bit here with the Egbert. So the brushes that I'm using here all came in the value set. Generally, that's the best way to purchase um, the Mimic brushes because you get a nice variety and it per brush price is lower and then it comes with some of the bigger ones it would be more expensive so just to let you know there but any of these are available individually as well. So now I want to work on the vase because our flowers are going to kind of spill over them so getting working from kind of back to forward is a lot easier and uh, I think I'll just switch over to this uh, Bright. This is a number six and it's a, br a bright is a little bit shorter than a flat. So a flat, a bright is the same shape as a flat, but a flat's a little bit longer. And again, I'm gonna go in with a little ultramarine blue, a little burnt umber, and I am going to get the top of the vase because this is gonna be the darkest. This is gonna be where we have the shadows from the flowers. And it's a darker on this uh, right-hand side here. So I'm going in with this on this edge. And I'm going to pull it kind of down a little straighter to the to the uh, table. And if you want a, a tip for doing vases, if you have a hard time getting them proportional, flip the painting over and then look at it from the other side and it will be a little easier for you. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of clean my brush, just kind of dry brush across just to get some of that get some of the paint off of there. Now I'm gonna pick up the white right on that dirty brush. And I'm gonna do the other side of the vase. Just pull that color down. Try to copy what you have on the opposite side. I'm gonna give it a flip around just to see how it looks upside down to see if I've got it, got it about right or not. It's actually not too bad. Surprisingly. And I'm just kind of uh, forcing these colors together a bit. I'm gonna flip it back because I think it's all right. And there is a little bit of a, um, 
uh, kind of directional line on the vase where it was made, like the pottery technique that it was made in. It was like probably hand thrown. So that's why my brush strokes are going horizontally. So basically here I'm just filling in the tooth and now I'm gonna go in with some white on its own. And I'm going to add that to the left-hand side where the highlight is. And pull it across the bottom to give it a little break from the table. And now I'm actually gonna add some paint and I'm gonna drag it across with a fan brush to get that uh, directional directional line. I think I'll use a smaller fan brush because it is a smaller area. And I'm just gonna switch back to this brush and pull that highlight back out a little bit. I'm not gonna to put too much emphasis on the, on the vase. It's gonna kind of just be a supporting role. I really wanna put the focus in on the flowers. And I feel like that needs a little bit more shape here. I feel like it should have like more of a, more of a definition there. I like that kind of having a little bit of an angular side there and I'm gonna to have to flip my painting around and just go at it from the other side too to make it match because now that I see that I like that shape I want to I want to kind of copy that I'm gonna go back in with my first brush that I was sketching with there mix up a little bit more ultramarine blue and burnt umber that was our, our uh, dark color and I'm just gonna look at this this side and just draw its opposite And pull that shadow in this way towards the center of the vase. Need a little bit of a curve at the bottom because it is a round vase. And just get some color in there. And then I'm going to drag the fan brush a little bit. Maybe a little bit of that yellow ochre, that's pretty. Okay, so now let me flip it around. Back to rights again. And I'm going to just drag this across. And then I'll pull in a little bit with a darker brush with a darker color just to bring that shadow back a little bit. Just try to keep it symmetrical as best I can. Okay, so there's our vase. And I'm just gonna rinse my brush which is really nice with water mixed wells. You can, you can kind of clean up as you go. When you're done though, just like anything else, you do want to follow up with a soap and water wash. And um, I like the Masters Brush Cleaner myself, but you can use just any old um, dish soap for that because it is a grease, grease fighter. All right. So now, um, oh, I got a few more brushes I want to wash here. We're going to be working with um, some reds, we're gonna be making some pinks, and we're gonna be using a lot of white. So whenever I have a situation where I'm gonna be using a lot of white, I like to get my colors in first because it seems like white can really overtake an oil painting because it's such a powerful opaque color. And like your other colors tend to be more transparent, especially if they're vivid. Same thing as like with watercolors. So I'm gonna start off with a um, with a round brush. This is probably around no, number four round. And um, I'm gonna just kind of wet it and not too much i just want to get some of this crimson you can see how the viscosity of the crimson is a little bit thinner um, that's pretty typical i'm going to go and just kind of sketch in my flowers so we got this little uh, barely open one up here just going to sketch in the bottom of it 
We can always go back in with, with more red later. This is a Lizard and Crimson, which is a kind of purpley based red. Um, but I like to get the basic kind of shapes in first. And that way, when I go in with the, with the white, I've got something to kind of uh, battle against it because the white is just so powerful. And your color does tend to be a little bit stronger in the center of these flowers. Now, if you want your um, your peonies to have a little bit more of a purple undertone, add a little uh, ultramarine blue in there. And that will give you, when we add the white, it'll give you a little bit of that lavender kind of uh, undertone that they have. Might want to wipe out a little bit of the uh, paint in here. That background color anyway. I don't think it make that big of a difference, but you don't have to have it in there muddying things up if we don't need it. We do want to make sure that we uh, overlap uh, a little bit of the background. We don't want to have just raw canvas showing anywhere. If you do get a lot of background color in your brush, just uh, rinse it and wipe it off. We'll be filling in with some leaves uh, in a little bit. So if you do have little bits of white and you know there's gonna be leaves there, don't worry about it. I mean, this is, there's two flowers there, so that's why it's kinda, kinda big. Get a little bit of dark in that one in behind. Okay, so now I'm going to keep with the same brush. I'm just going to rinse it and blot it. So here's what you can kind of see, especially with a color like Crimson, how it's really, I mean, there's a lot of color still left in that brush, which is fine because we're going in to do flowers, but um, that's why you need to wash them. You need to get all that paint out of there. And I'm going to start off with the edges of this flower here because the edges are lighter. So while I have all that beautiful light color on my brush, I want to get that in there. And as I start to pick up reds, then I will bring it inwards. And this is a very impressionistic technique. Don't think of it paint as painting the flower. Think about it, about it as painting how the... Um, how the light affects or how the light reacts to the flower. I'm going to switch over to this filbert here. Yeah. And then grab some more white and to do some of these bigger petals. That's another way to kind of keep from fussing and keep from having everything look too much the same is to switch brushes, switch sizes, because then you'll just automatically get a more um, painterly look. Now here you can see what I mean about the colors, just kind of the white, just kind of taking over. Um, that's why I wanted to get those dark colors in first because I knew that the white would just wanna kind of take everything over. When you have a, uh, a bouquet where you have a lot of um, multi-petal flowers, I think it's fun to do them in an impressionistic technique because um, because to paint every little flower in there would be tedious and then you'd lose that freshness. You can see how they just meld together and you lose a lot of the, um, the fresh color as you go. So this flower is a little bigger. I think I will just stick with that filbert. and grab a larger filbert here, the one I used in the background, just blot it off really good. And I'm gonna grab a little more white on my palette. I do like to find a fresh spot to put it, so I'll put it on the other side. It'll be off camera, but it's just a gob of white, and that way it won't have any other contaminants in it. Filberts are really, they're probably my most um, used paintbrush in oils, because especially because I like to do flowers. Um, I find them to be, they're they're kind of like the useful like around is in watercolor, but um, 
because they're they have the power of a flat they have that power to push that viscous paint around um they just work a lot better but you still get that soft rounded edge that you would with a with a round brush all right so i've got that kind of blocked in and then i'm just going to go in with white and get this guy back here I'm not worrying about um, detail at this point. I'm just kind of blocking it. I'm worrying about, I'm not worrying about detail, but I am worrying about accuracy. I want it accurate, but not necessarily detailed. You're, and that's something that I see a lot of people kind of backwards on. They'll try to get detail and not worry about accuracy. But you know, you can have the most beautiful flower petal painted, but if it is in the wrong place or the wrong size, it doesn't matter, it's gonna look wrong. A little flower bud down there that I want to get. And actually, there's a couple little flower petals uh, from the reference photo on the table, and I really like the way that looks. So, uh, And I like how it kind of brightens up the shadow area, so I'm going to put a couple of those in there as well. And by doing it with the um, with this big filbert, I don't, um, I'm not going to be fuss fussing around with too much detail. Okay, so we're going to leave the flowers be for now. We are going to work on some leaves. And I'm going to sketch first with a little round brush. I'm going to take the um, some of the primary yellow. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some phthalo green. And that's going to be the color I begin with. You could also, you know, I've started with a sap green and added some, you know, crimson to it to darken it. You know, you can you can use whatever you like. I didn't have a sap green in the set, and I wanted to kind of stick to the um, introductory Berlin set. So if you're, you know, if you are curious about this and you want to try it, you don't have to go and spend a lot of money. You can just get the intro set and see if it's for you or not. So I'm just going to get this little, little leaf there, little leaves around the buds. Get the stem in here. One of the nice things about the oil paint is that it really glides. So like to do this leaf, I just have to kind of press my brush in and kind of twist and lift. And then I've got that lovely, just little, um, uh, little, little leaf there. And we'll put this leaf in here again on the tip of the brush. Then I'm going to press down and wiggle and then just kind of pull it up. We'll do more to those leaves as we go, but accuracy, not detail at this point. And then we're going to need another uh, big leaf down here. And this is a good, um, if you have any problems with a sketch, of like a um, of a vase or something if it's a little not symmetrical quite the way you want it if you can kind of drape a leaf down over it um, around just kind of to break up so you can't see the entire um, object that will help your brain kind of fill in the rest and if something's not quite symmetrical then it won't be apparent All right, throw a leaf in there to kind of break up those two flowers Okay, so we are going to need to do some some work with the values here because we have them, the leaves are way too light, but I wanted to get them sketched in just so that I could I could kind of see it there. Uh, so to make a darker green, we could take this, this uh, take the green on its own. Let's look at that. It's a little bit darker, but it's not super dark. So what I'm going to do is add its opposite, which would be the crimson. And that's almost going to make a black. I don't know if you can see that really well in my palette because of the uh, of the light. It's, it can be kind of tricky with oil paints because they're kind of glossy when they're wet. Um, but you can probably see it here as I add it to this leaf. See how dark that is? Now that's red and green. And I'm using the same red that I used for the um, for our flowers. So it's going to just automatically look nice because I'm, I'm harmonizing. I'm using colors that are already here, that I've already used. And then I could take that dark color 
and any place where I want it a little darker, I can add that in. Now I wouldn't use green to darken up the red on the flowers though because it can kind of go grayish brown and it can just make it look a little more withered. In the like when I'm doing flowers or fruit and I'm doing the fruit part or the flower part, I will use like a, a color that's close on the color wheel. Like for instance, if it was like a, a peony flower here, or if it was like a raspberry, I would use blue. I would use like ultramarine blue. And that would give me that dark without um, without deadening any of my color. So, you know, and that's stuff that comes with experience. Uh, the color theory, you know, you learn as you go. A little dark there. And, oh, I think I want another little leaf kind of poking out over here. There. This one can be fattened up a little bit. Got too much. I picked up some white. So if you pick up white from a flower, just wipe your brush off and go back in, start again. And this one, I still feel like that one could be a little bit darker. Maybe I will add a little bit of blue to that so I don't get it too red. I don't want it, you know, I don't want it to look muddy. And blue is another one that you could use to darken your green. So sap green right out of the two would have been a little bit more um, accurate and then wouldn't have required so much adjusting. Um, so go ahead and use that if you want to. But like I said, I wanted this to be really useful to folks that just want to get started and they just want to try. Uh, the intro set. All right, now I want to put some highlights on the leaves while I'm at it, since they're um, they're wet and um, I can blend in very easily. I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some of the primary yellow. You can use whatever brush you like for this. I'm just using this small um, number two bright, and I'm just going to go in and hit some of the edges. Might even add a little bit of white to that, just to make it stand up. Now everything is going to be completely kind of greasy feeling and wet as you're working because nothing's going to dry in the time that you're, you know, working on it in one sitting during this tutorial. If that bothers you, you can take a break. You can pause the video. You can come back in a day or two when things have started to set up. Uh, so, so feel free to do that if you want to. I really don't think I like that brush for this technique so much. I feel like I want a small round because it's a little more flexible or a small filbert. And that's a nice thing about having a, a good assortment of brushes. You can, um, you can experiment and see what fits your style better. There, I like that edge. And when you get an edge you like, just leave it be. Now, in the reference photo, you're going to notice that the leaf that this big leaf here is darker, but it's also set back further. It didn't overlap the vase. I brought it forward, so that's why I'm highlighting here. Uh, so depending on where your leaf is in your picture, that would depend on what kind of highlight you gave it. I'm grabbing a little white because it doesn't seem to be... We have this one kind of further away from the flowers, not right underneath them, so it would have a little bit more of a highlight. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the flowers and um, work on them a little bit. And I am going to use a smaller round for that. I always end up with a bucket full of like unclean brushes, which I, which I have off camera <laughs> already. Um, I'm gonna grab the crimson on its own. I'm gonna add a little bit of ultramarine to it. So what I have is kind of like a, a wine color. And I am going to kind of put some shadows in. Now remember you need contrast. So you don't have, you don't want to blend every single thing that you're working on. And I think that's kind of um, very tempting to do when you're using oils, especially if you're used to using um, other media, like it, it just, it can be very addicting, all the blending that you can do. So. Um, you know, so blend some things, but leave some things be. I think it might be nice just to pull that shadow out a little bit, not 
blend it out too much because I don't want the white to cover up everything, but like there, I left it fairly unblended and fairly contrasted. And sometimes when I clean my brush off, I just kind of I just kind of wipe it on my palette. So if I need that color again, I can just go in and, and kind of grab it really quick. And you will have to kind of reload frequently when you're doing this, when you're working on the white, because you're going to lose your definition. You're good. Everything's going to get mixed up on your brush. So you'll need to kind of, I'll show you my palette here. So what I do is I swirl off my brush. Okay. When it, the colors get mixed and then I'll go and reload with a fresh color. But then I have that color to go back to, um, should I need it? Like if I see, oh, that little bud needs just a little hint of color, I can just go in and grab that right off of there. So I, I basically kind of go in here and I look for shapes that I think would make nice flower petals, and that's where I decide to throw in that shadow. And I'm just kind of dividing up, breaking up some of these gobs, these splotches, and turning them into petals. Again, a very um, impress impressionistic technique. And you really, you don't want a real stiff brush for this layer because you're just kind of lightly um, dancing those colors around. If you have a stiff brush, you're going to just scoop the color off and you're going to be lifting it back to the canvas. So, you know, go a little softer. Sometimes I'll use the um, synthetic uh, Taclon brushes for this, the uh, like the golden haired ones. Um, you just have to be careful to clean them well so that they will last for you because it is the solvents are kind of hard on them. But with the water mixables, since you don't have to really get into the solvents, you can just wash them with soap and water. Uh, it works pretty well. So for mediums for these, you can use any regular oil painting medium. However, it won't be so water mixable if you do that. So you will have to probably use like a solvent to clean them. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're uh, if you're interested in mediums. Um, I find that if you paint in one sitting, you probably don't really need much for mediums. Mediums come in more into play when you're working in layers. But you can find mediums that are designed specifically for water mixable oils. I'll link to the um, the the uh, Berlin paints in the video description so you can find them. So I'm just looking for a tinier brush here. Uh, oh, this one will do, do well. Let's wipe it off. Okay, and I feel like I want a little more definition in the centers of some of those. I'm just going to go in with a crimson. Because I really, I love, crimson's one of my favorite colors, so I like to get little dashes of that color in just on its own. If your paints sit for a while, sometimes the oil will separate from them. Um, it's not its not a bad thing. It just kind of means that it's kind of sat. Uh, something you could do is like if you, if you store your paints like hanging on a rack, you could flip them every once in a while um, or just, you know, squeeze out a bit and mix it up on your palette. It is kind of a pain, but if you don't paint that frequently with, um, with your oil paints, it can happen, but it usually doesn't ruin the paint or bother the paint or mean there's anything wrong with the paint that they just they just kind of settle and separate after you've had them for a while. I've got paints that I used to buy these, the really big tubes of Winton by Winsor Newton for my classes and I was when I was reorganizing last year I found a bunch of them and the paint is still absolutely fine but you know if I was to squirt a little bit out I'd get a little like a little squish of oil to begin with and it's not it's not a problem it's not going to affect anything. You don't need to throw it away. It's still going to be fine to use. You just might need to squeeze out more than you anticipated so you can mix it up with a palette knife. Now, if you want that a little darker, grab a little ultramarine. And you can always go in with a little bit of white again to bring out those highlights. So if you've lost some, don't worry about it. Nothing to worry about here, guys. I'm adding the dark back here because I want it to be clear that those are different flowers. So I'm adding that color to the one in behind. And that's just going to 
it's just going to visually tell us this color is a little bit cooler. It's obviously a different flower, so it doesn't look like that one just kind of morphed out of control. Now, some people have asked me, can you use the same water bucket or the same water jars that you use for your watercolors? Um, I do, and I've never had a problem. I've never had any residue from my water bucket on any paintings. Um, I mean, I'm sure the people will tell, tell you, you know, have separate things for each, but you know, you can, you can wash a water bucket, you can wash a water jar. I don't see the need. It's, you know, it's not a porous thing like a brushes. Brushes I definitely um, would suggest you keep separate, but for the water buckets, I, I, uh, I use them for both. We're just about done, you know, really, we just got to put some highlights on these flowers and a few shadows and um, there's really not much more to it. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my brushes here. What I'm looking for is a, kind of like a soft filbert color uh, brush. And, uh, oh, this one will work, I think. And so with this, this one, these are so, the bristles are so long in this. Let's give it a try. This actually might work out pretty well. Um, I want it because it's really soft. It's not going to lift up the, the paint underneath. I'm going to grab a little more white. So something that I would recommend doing, if you're going to order like the set of, um, of well, any water mixable oils, I would get a large tube of water of white because you, with, with uh, oil painting, acrylic painting, anything like that, you're going to go through more white than anything else. So I would go ahead and just order. And you don't have to have the same brand. Like if you see a really good deal, of another brand, just get, you know, titanium white is titanium white. It doesn't really matter that much. I would just get a big tube of it though, because you will use it. Think of this as like the sun is hitting these certain like tips of the different petals. And that's what you're doing here with this white. And I actually like this brush because it's so, um, it's so long and floppy that you can't really fuss too much with it. The paint's gonna go where the paint's gonna go. And you kind of have to be okay with that. So with this, with these highlights, you're just kind of like scooping. You're scooping up the paint. And I'm going to grab, I feel like I do want a little bit more red in this area here. So I did, I'm switching to that number four round. And just putting a little bit in here. I feel like I want to fatten that bottom up a little bit. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the white here. Blend it in for a, chef, for a highlight, for just kind of a mid-tone mid-range. Just give it a little slice of highlight there. It's really easy to overdo. Okay, and then this little that's brush is a little dirty for that. Let me see if I can find a cleaner one. I don't really have a cleaner one that's small, so I'm just going to grab this one here. A random Random generic brushes. Want to give this a little bit of. Um, I want to give it a little bit of length on that petal. Okay, so now I want to do a little shading on the table because I think. That our flowers are pretty well done. I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it. I can always go in later and add more details if I want to. So let's take that brush that we originally sketched with. Just making sure it's fairly clean. I'm gonna take some of the same dark color we used the ultramarine and burnt umber. I'm actually grabbing a little of this oil. Uh, there was a little uh, seepage of oil on my canvas. I'm on a, on, on my palette from that tube of red, so I'm just gonna add that in there uh, as a medium. Cause I don't really wanna add water to it cause it might lift the paint underneath at this stage of the game cause we've already uh, put stuff down. I am gonna add 
a little bit of shadow here at the bottom of this vase. I'm going to add it at the bottom of these little petals. If you pick up some of the white, which will happen, you just go and um, reload your brush, wipe it off and reload it. And I just wipe it on the palette, nothing fancy. And that just gives a little bit more definition. I also need a little bit of shadow under that leaf because that's hanging so close to the vase, even though it's not in the reference photo, I know that there would be a shadow there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And I can also put a little more shadow under those flowers. And I'm gonna grab that fan brush again and just kind of continue that same pattern that we had. Just try not to get into the flowers at all. I just wanted to have a little bit of that. Um, Uh, a little of that, just that same streaky texture of the vase. And there we go. Maybe I'm going to wipe this brush off a little bit and just pull a little bit more of that out because I felt like it, I lost a little bit of it there. Now you will, you, I don't know if you can see on screen or not, but you will notice that you will have some parts that are glossier than others. As it dries, it should kind of um, even out. But if you end up, if it, you do end up having some glossy spots uh, after it's all dry, that's where varnishing comes in. You do want to be patient when you're going to varnish. You want to make sure you allow plenty of time for all your layers to dry before you do that. Um, but then the varnish is going to give it a, a uniform appearance. What I did there was I felt like those two flowers were kind of um, morphing into each other so I wanted to just separate them a little bit so that's what I did I just put a little bit of this darker um, pink on the petals that were underneath and then like as this dries if you're like oh I want I wish I had that a little bit darker I want to I want to have a little bit more um, a little bit more definition you can go in here with that ultramarine blue and lizard and crimson and you can um, pull apart some of those uh, some of those those petals just kind of kind of tuck in those little shadows in between the petals and that will give you that really full look of a multi petal petal flower and uh, That's pretty much all there is to it uh, You can find all the materials I used in the video description and a coupon code to our sponsor Jerry's and um, I really enjoyed these paints if you want to do some oil painting, but you don't want to mess with the solvents um, These are a great paint to try. These are the Lucas Berlin on all the paints They um, they tell you what the pigments are so that um, you know what you're getting you know what you're mixing most of them are single pigment colors but you can um, uh, most of the most of the ones in the set are single pigment but you can also find that information as you're buying individual tubes if you want to that said these like 20 milliliter tubes go a long way um, if you got this set and got a big tube of white you would be set for quite a few paintings um, I've been using these for a couple of years and um, I haven't really made much of a dent in them. So um, so give them a try if you've been curious about oils and you don't want to deal with the solvents. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it and it helps my channel grow. If you have some friends that want to learn how to paint, please send them my way. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.